we're back. Stripe Show podcast on a Friday. We don't do many of these on a Friday. Thank you for being here. We're here on a Friday. Emergency pod, if you will. All things Scotty Scheffler putting. That's what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to be sharing some things with you. All things number one player in the world, Scotty Scheffler. And what I see with his putting. Because when I got home yesterday and I was watching the tour championship on TV and I'm watching Scotty Scheffler down the stretch, it hit me in, in a few of the putts that he hit that this has now reached a whole nother level with his putting. In my eyes, and I've been talking about it on the podcast here over the last month, Scotty Scheffler needs to address his putting. He needs another set of eyes to look at his putting stroke and weed out some of the habits that are starting to come about. And he didn't do it. And, and, and I was talking to some people out there on tour close to the situation. And Scotty Scheffler doesn't want to talk about his putting. Uh, he's stubborn. He doesn't want to, you know, get into the stroke. He's tried a couple different putters, this and that. He's dabbled. But nothing really has transpired. It's interesting. Last night, I was listening to some commentary uh, about Scotty Scheffler and his putting. And a couple people were talking about, well, well, last week it was better. Thought maybe he uh, worked some things out. But the reality is, is he lost two strokes last week at the BMW Championship where he finished second. And, of course, we know Scotty Scheffler is so dominant. So dominant from T to green. At the BMW, strokes gain off the tee, first. At the BMW, strokes gain approach, first. You know how hard that is to do? <laughs> I mean, the guy is ridiculous from a ball striking perspective. And we know what he can do it around the green. Strokes gain T to green, he is absurd. Another level. Tiger S. With the flat stick in his hand, the problem is becoming bigger. And when I was watching yesterday in Atlanta, a technical thing has now festered enough to where you can clearly see now it's mental. The strokes that I saw coming in down the stretch was someone who didn't address some of the small technical things that I'm going to show you here today. And the ball has come off the face now enough inconsistent out of the heel where he can't match up the line and the speed inside 10, 12 feet. It's happened enough that now it's become mental. And he's tried a couple things, different putters and whatnot, that didn't work because I don't think it's a different putter solution. And that's what happens when you start reaching for things that don't address the root cause and they don't work, then you start losing confidence and you start steering it and it becomes mental. And that's what I saw yesterday in Atlanta. And it sucks because if Scotty Scheffler could putt at all, he would win every golf tournament. I mean, I'm talking every single golf tournament. He's that dominant uh, from tee to green. So what's going on here, right? What, what is happening? And, and the goal of this podcast today is I've been looking at a lot of putting video, as much as I can get my hands on. It's tough to, <laughs> to get good angles and um, things that you would trust with your own eyes as a teacher. But get some putting content uh, that happened at the end of last year, at the beginning of this year, when Scotty Scheffler was winning six events in 13 starts, was winning the Masters, was winning the Waste Management Phoenix Open. What, what did his putting look like then versus what we saw yesterday in Atlanta, the Tour Championship, which is as bad as I've seen his stroke look? So we're going to get into that. Thank you for being here. Stripe Show Podcast. Today's podcast is brought to you by Hack Motion. Hack Motion is a sensor that you put on your wrist. You can put on your lead wrist or your trail wrist. Measures your wrist angles what they're doing from side to side, what they're doing up and down, what they're doing rotationally. Love the tool. 
doing some really cool stuff with them that we're going to start sharing beginning next week on my social platforms. Check them out. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, LinkedIn. What am I missing? So many platforms out there. Go check it out. But really, really interesting data that they have on wrist angles as it pertains to full swing, short game, and putting. So I'm working with them uh, on sharing some of that, which I'm really excited about because I talk wrist angles all the time. And when you educate someone's hands and their wrists and what they're doing, it really elevates the ceiling for an amateur player or even a professional golfer. So hack motion, excited to have them aboard. Let's get into Scotty Scheffler's putting as yet in Atlanta. I mean, you can just see, you know, he's defeated. You know, Scotty Scheffler doesn't show a lot of emotion. And yesterday in some of these putts coming down the stretch, you could just see the reaction that he looks pretty darn defeated and understandably so. And so I've got some of these videos loaded in here. And there's a putt right there. And you can see he just kind of looks away and disgusts. And for those joining me on YouTube, you can see this. And those listening, I'm going to really articulate what I'm looking at here. And when you look at his stroke, the biggest thing that really jumps out to me is what's happening at the finish. And right now I've got this video paused at the finish. And the first thing that jumps out is his left shoulder and how high it is. His left shoulder has really went up to the sky. His shoulders are rocking. His right shoulder is down. His left shoulder is high. His left elbow is starting to pull away, almost like a little chicken wing, the beginning of it. His left wrist has a lot of extension. And you keep going down that chain, and to my eyes, what really jumps out is how high the putter head is. And it's almost like a little hang-on, too. Like, you can see how, even in the finish, like, that toe hasn't released. Like, he's trying to reverse engineer that face, and the putter head has really swung up quick. I bet you yesterday, Scotty had to be hitting up on it, like, three, four, five degrees. I mean, a ton, really hitting up on it. And so you look at this finish, left shoulder, left elbow, left wrist, the putter head, the putter face, all of these things elevating through the impact zone. And it's a guess. It's a reverse engineering. Something's going on where he is not trusting that putter face coming into impact, hit it solid, down the intended line with the correct speed. When you see this, um, and, and then you start looking at the impact point, and I'm going to bring up another video here. You start looking at the impact point right here. He's hitting a lot of putts out of the heel. And this was about a, oh, I don't know, three and a half foot putt that just looked like it just came left off the face. He hit a lot of hard pulls yesterday. And so we already know what it looks like in the finish. We know that it's starting to come out of the heel. And it's as bad as I saw it yesterday, in disgust, making nothing. And so now I go back to a different stroke. Look at this one here. This was at the American Express. And you start looking at that finish. Let's play that again. And you start looking at this finish right here, different angle, albeit, but his left shoulder still just a touch high. His left double looks more structured. His left wrist doesn't look as extended, and the putter head looks lower, and the toe has definitely crossed the face. Here's a putt from the Masters on the 18th. This was a similar length putt, maybe just a touch longer than the one that uh, I showed you from yesterday. So let's bring this back. Now look at that. Left shoulder definitely lower. Left elbow still hanging in there. Left wrist more solid. And the putter head definitely lower. And he hit that one right in the jars. And so I'll bring these two together now, side by side. 
and you look at the difference. This was about the same like putt. I think the one on the left, maybe like another foot, maybe. But you start looking at the differences there at the finish, and you can see that the left shoulder yesterday in Atlanta, definitely higher. I mean, he's starting to bail out of that thing. You can definitely see the left wrist kind of starting to, to pull away with the left elbow, more extension in the left wrist. And you can see that the putter face um, has elevated more and kind of reverse engineering, trying to hold off the face. So the attack angle to me yesterday kind of up more and before on the one on the left, a little bit more down. The finish more committed to a lower finish, more down left shoulder, not as high. To me, a clear difference for a high skilled player. Look, it's tough when you're working with really good players like Scotty Shuffler. We're talking 0.0001% here of the golfing world. This is the best player in the world. It's hard to, to magnify differences between maybe what they did at the beginning of the year versus eight months into the season. When you look at this right here, considering that, this is a glaring difference in my eye, a glaring difference between what he was doing and what he's doing now. And so, is it a difference in putter? Yeah, let's just switch putters and all is good. No, it's not. Is it that he just needs to practice harder? No. Is it that he just needs to continue to hit putts and it'll work itself out? I don't think so. I think it's right there in front of you. And it's really not so much my opinion of, well, here's what I think Scotty should do. It's just showing Scotty that, this is what it used to look like versus what it looks like now. And so how can we make it look more like it did on the left versus what it looked like on Thursday in Atlanta? Because yesterday, to me, is as bad as I've seen it. And so what do we need to do, right? I think that's now becomes the steps to kind of go back towards what Scotty used to do. And here's what I would do. The first thing I would do with Scotty, and, I, and I've been talking to a number of teachers about these thoughts, about the differences that I'm seeing with Scotty at the beginning of the season versus in Atlanta. And one of the things that I think um, that I would do, and I think you would probably might even get a little pushback from Scotty on this, is I would weaken the left-hand grip. It appears to me the left hand grip has has gotten shrunk. Like it's it's definitely let me put my left hand in front of the camera. Left hand's definitely a little bit more on top. And with that left hand more on top, like the left wrist looks like it's got more extension. Like you go back to hack motion, extension would be this way, the cup in the wrist, and then flexion, of course, would be bow in the wrist. Now we don't want to flex, but when you put the left hand more on top and it's stronger. Like the left wrist is going to take on more extension. And when it does that, the tendency is the shaft doesn't want to lean as much forward. Okay. And I think when you look at Scotty now, like the shaft lean is minimal. And as it comes into impact, could you argue that Scotty needs just a little bit more shaft lean? I think you could because of the elevation, right? What we're seeing of that putter head swinging through extension in that wrist is, is going to cause that, or is going to promote that to want to swing up sooner. So I'd weaken the left hand just a touch. I go, I go back to, I can remember when tiger was struggling with his putting. I think it was like, I want to say like 10, 11, 12 years ago. And Steve Stricker would look at tiger's putting when he would struggle. And I remember very similar situation. And Stricker told Tiger to weaken that left-hand grip just a little bit, lean the shaft just a bit more forward, and off he went. And off he went because the putter head felt probably like it was moving down a little bit more, and his finish became a little bit, um, a little bit lower, more down. The toe could release naturally. And so... I remember that with Tiger, and I think the same applies here to Scotty and what we're seeing. I think that left hand needs to be a touch weaker. 
And I would even maybe even consider leaning the shaft just a bit more forward at address. Now, some of that's negotiable. There's some things that could happen there um, with Scotty. Players tend to push back. But I would kind of start there. Now, from there, I, I think what, what has to happen here is you got to make sure in the backstroke that that the putter head isn't swinging too far inside and or shut. I think there, there's times when I watch Scotty, the putter head does look maybe a little bit trapped inside at times, maybe a little bit shut, not a lot, but just a little bit. And then other strokes look a little bit better, but it does look like the tendency could be a little in and or a little shut. So with that said, I do think weakening that left hand could help that, all right? But in saying that, you could create an environment pretty easily that would allow Scotty to self-discover, don't get the putter head in and or a little shut, like, you know, get it on that perfect plan. I don't think that would take much at all. I really don't. And I think that left-hand grip would help. Take a little more shaft lean, uh, maybe a little more weight left. Like, there's some things that you could negotiate with the player at address creating the environment in the backswing that would kind of start, you know, promoting what we want to do now to the finished position. And because the finished position becomes the most important thing. And I bring this back up. All right. And we, and we look at this, Let's see if I can, there we go. Blow that up so we can see it completely. And so again, Scotty at Augusta on the left early in the year, Scotty, yesterday in Atlanta on the right. So we've got the grip, and you can see, like, doesn't the, doesn't the left hand on the right look a little bit stronger? It definitely looks more extended, right? I mean, but it does look a touch stronger to me. Um, But you can see, obviously, the difference in the left shoulder, left elbow, and left wrist in the club head. And so, so how do we start to get back to that finish on the left? All right, so we've weakened the grip. We've maybe got the shaft touch more forward. Maybe got the weight touch more. We've got this got the backstroke exactly where we want it. From there, Scotty needs to get back to feeling like that putter head is swinging more down to the finish. He has got to start feeling like that left shoulder stays lower through the strike, more down through the strike. The putter head finishes lower through the strike, not up. Not left shoulder up, not putter head up, but down. And in saying that, if I if I said, you know, to someone on the surface, look, I need you to hit more down on putts. You're like, wait a minute. I, I thought you have to hit more up on it. I thought, I thought in putting you, you hit up. Well, you probably hit more up than you would with a seven iron or an eight iron. But there's still, I, I think the feeling that there has to be this feeling like you are indeed staying more down and finishing that putter lower and more abbreviated, right? Rather than letting that putter head move up so quickly. And when it moves up, then the left wrist takes on more extension. The left elbow pulls away and the left shoulder starts to elevate. And so with the weaker grip, maybe a touch more shaft lean, maybe a little more weight left. Now things are a little bit kind of more stacked up, a little bit more on top of it, a little more. Now I feel like I can almost feel like I'm trapping it just a little bit. And that putter head stays lower. That left shoulder stays lower and more back versus up, not rocking, kind of more of a turning motion. And with that turning motion and that lower finish, the feeling like I'm hitting down on it to this more abbreviated finish. And that left shoulder turning versus rocking, the, the, the toe will start to cross. You know, you get that little toe release slightly, but just naturally. And again, I think that those things start to become a reality, I think, with the, the subtle adjustments that address and making sure that it's, you know, cleaned up in the backstroke. And again, I don't think, it would take much to clean up the backstroke, if any, honestly, if any. You know, it's hard to, you know, it's tough to get that perfect angle without being out there all the time um, on exactly where that putter head is going back. 
but I don't think it's that far off, if at all. There might be at times it's a touch in and shut, maybe. But you certainly do your due diligence and clean it up. And then from there, it's just all about, hey, we got to start building this endpoint. We got to start building this firmer, lower, more compact, hitting down endpoint past the ball. And as we start building that, then that strike starts to come more out of the center of the face. That picture on the right, that elevation of the left shoulder, that's where that heel strike comes from. And so you start building that lower finish. The ball starts coming off the face. I bet you the ball starts coming off the face a little bit cleaner, a little bit faster, certainly rolling better. And as those things start to happen, the genius of Scotty, as a result of that in point, I call it the catcher's mitt, just past the ball, like that putter head's coming in and the catcher's mitt catches it. Rather than hitting it and then the putter head just continues to kind of drift up, 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 up. Like a wishy-wash stroke. I'm wishing it in. That's what he was doing yesterday. He's trying to wish it in. And Scotty's so good, he can wish it in from, from some time. In fact, he can get away with this in longer putting. And he does. His approach putting is good. He's so talented in the, in the longer putts and instinctive that he can match it up. And, and, and his approach putting is pretty good, but inside 10, 12 feet, this is where it just blows up because the ball comes off the face out of the heel, maybe low in the face at times. And that starts to linger in starting direction. It starts to be inconsistent on how the ball comes off the face, so he struggles with distance control and he can't match it up. And it just goes on and on and on, tries a putter, doesn't different butter, and doesn't work. Loses confidence. Tries to tweak this or tweak that with the putter, doesn't work, loses more confidence. Now it's becoming mental. And that's where you see that finish on the right. That is a glaring difference, folks, for a, a high caliber player like Scotty Shuffer. Glaring difference. If Scotty looks at this, and I hope he does, because I'm doing this because I, I, I'm a huge fan of Scotty Scheffler. I'm a huge fan of a lot of people in his camp. I'm just showing him the difference. If Scotty Scheffler looks at this and he doesn't try to get back to that picture on the left, he's the most stubborn golfer in the world. I mean, come on. And so clean up the setup. Got a few negotiable items there. Items there. Rule out the backstroke, create a little environment, easy to do. Get back to the firmer, lower, more committed, hitting down catcher's mitt, end point, past the ball. You know what I think of in this stroke, and I'll finish with this, <laughs> that, that is a bit of an exaggeration, is this guy, Billy Horschel. Watch this. And you want to talk about the opposite of what you just looked at, right? Look at that. Now, of course, he's left hand low. And left hand low would certainly lean the shaft more forward. Left hand low would certainly bring the left shoulder down, right? Because your left hand's lower. But look at his shoulders. Look at that. His shoulders are much more level. Look at the putter head down. Look at the, the shaft lean. Exaggeration. I get it. And I'm showing you this because this is kind of the other side of the world. This is where, you know, Scotty needs to kind of go towards. He, he probably doesn't need to go this far this way, but just to give you an example of the other side, this is what it would look like left hand low would certainly lean the shaft a little more forward would certainly drop the left shoulder down you put a little weight left and then you'd start just popping it to that low finish feels like you're hitting down down to the low finish left shoulder hangs in there left wrist more solid left elbow more constant Weird to say, but 
you could you could wrap it up by saying he just needs to learn to hit more down. <laughs> and I think if he did this, I really do, and he started cleaning these things up, I think the genius starts to come back out. That ball would leave the face much more in the center of the face, much more in the center of the face, much cleaner. The ball speed would just come off clean and rolling and pure. And he'd feel that, and it would start to, you know, just more online, more solid. And then he would start to match up the pace of the putter head to that. And he'd start to build confidence in that really low finish. More down, not up. And things would start to match up. And he can use the putter that he's won all these tournaments with and that he went back to. But until he cleans that up right there, what we saw, he's just going to keep losing confidence. That's that. That's my feel. I mean, it really is. Yesterday, not a good sign. I hope he sees this. I hope you enjoyed this. All things Scotty Scheffler's putting on a Friday. Hope you're having a great summer. We'll be back next week. Stripe Show Podcast.